Colonial Sports Center. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Colonial Sports Center. My name is Kevin Plowcher. To my right is Cam McCariola. Cam, we had a plethora of Colonial Sports this past week, but we've got to begin with something that just ended a few minutes ago. Catch me off guard with plethora. Big word, not comprehending. But just moments ago, men's basketball finished up against Oakland, top seed in the Horizon League, and they would fall by a score of 63 to 43. Take a look here. Trey Townsend, 22 points, 17 rebounds. We will ask Garrett Sherwin at the event center in just a moment about that performance, but look at Alvaro Foguiera, 16 points and 11 rebounds. Kevin, what were your takeaways from this game? Yeah, I mean, listen, the main positive takeaway is Foguiera's back-to-back 15-plus point games. You see he finished with a double-double, but 43 points, their lowest since 2018. Uh, Trey Townsend, 22 points, just four for 15 from the floor. Now, where does he get all those extra points from? The free throw line. Just two free throw attempts for the Colonials. Lowest attempts taken since February of 2014, where they also took and made two free throw attempts. On the other side, Oakland, 24 attempted free throws. Townsend, six offensive rebounds. Colonials had eight as a team, so a dominant defensive and offensive performance from the Golden Grizzlies. I think that can just attest to how good of a team Oakland is. Not letting the Colonials gen generate any offense in the paint, getting fouls. Every time the ball would go into the paint, you would see two Oakland defenders on top of the Colonials, and they just were blocking them out, and it was a stellar performance by them. I agree. But we have Garrett Sherwin live at the event center. Garrett, do you have us? Hello, hello, guys. I was here at the event center to see the Colonials take a tough 20-point loss. And, you know, really the story, of the, the, game, the story of the game was the amoeba defense that Coach, that, well, that's what Coach O'Toole called it. And it was just tough to figure out for the Colonials all night. So Garrett, what went wrong for the Colonials tonight offensively? Really just that amoeba defense, it's, it's unique. It's, it comes from UNLV in the 80s or 90. No one really runs and it's just tough when you see it to get comfortable with it. And that was really, really the story of the game. Yeah, and you saw, you were on the court watching Trey Townsend, how dominant and how much like his presence was on the court tonight. Yeah, it was, he really just dominated the game. You know, he was getting to the line at will, and the Colonials only got their first free three at the under four time. It was just difficult for, for the Colonials, and he really controlled the game. Yeah, and the Colonials offense, 17 for 60 from field goal range. What just wasn't clicking for that offense tonight? Yeah. Coach Tool said after the game that they were taking taking those mid-range uh, shots, and that's really not what you want to do during the Amoeba defense, and that's what they were doing. That's really what the defense is set up to do, and the Colonials were just playing into Oakland's hand, to be honest with you. Yeah, well, Garrett, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We will catch up later, but for now, Kevin, we have some more basketball to get into. Women's basketball was in action in Wright State, Let's hop into some highlights and see what went down in Dayton. And we will hop off and check out at the Nutter Center what <laughs> happened with the Colonials versus Raiders. Colonials riding a lengthy losing streak. Oh, this is men's at Wright State. We've got men's basketball against Wright State early in the first half. Tanner Holden backs down Josh Corbin. It's Brandon Noel for three. It's good. Well, I've got to switch it up every now and then, keep everybody on their toes. 12 0 now. It's inside. Wright State scores to make it 14 0 after the AJ Braun layup. It's 19 2 now. Justice Williams up top, guarded by Trey Calvin. Williams passes to Jackson last. The cutting Stephon Walker inside. The Colonials finally score again. Now, it was more of the same for the next eight minutes. Colonials down 30 to 15. Josh Corbin being defended by Andrew Wellage. Walker cuts across. Corbin gets separation. His three is good. Corbin finished with nine, all coming from beyond the arc. A little later, Colonials down 18. Josh Corbin's going to drive and kick out to Jackson last. Last finds Marquise Hastings, who looks for the cutter, but Hastings says, I'm going to do it myself. Spin move through the lane. Layup is good. Hastings finished with 11. 
Colonials now down 17, trying to find a spark. Corbin, he's going to drive the lane and kick out to Jackson last. He takes a three, and it's money. Jackson last finished with a game-high 15, tied with Fulgieris, 6 for 9 from the floor. Less than a minute left in the first half. Brandon Knoll tries to get the pass, somehow saves it. Alex Hybrex finds Tanner Holden for the layup. A 51-point first half for the Raiders, who take a big lead into halftime. Second half, Colonial still down big, and that was the theme of the night. Down early and often, and just never recovered. Justice Williams, he gets a screen, pulls up for three, and it's good. All of his 12 points came from beyond the arc, where he was four of eight. Colonials now down 18. Justice Williams, no look pass to Fulgieris. Oh my, showtime, that layup is good. Justice Williams with that no look pass, you might see that again later. Just over 12 and a half minutes left. Josh Corbin, he's gonna get a screen, pulls up from way downtown, and it's good. The sharp shooting ability by Josh Corbin on full display in what was unfortunately never really a competitive game. Casting our minds back a few minutes, A.J. Braun gets it inside, gets Walker in the air, layup is good, and the foul. Braun finished with a game-high 24 points. You see it again, just a perfect play from Braun. Gets Walker in the air and draws the contact and makes the layup. Now, just over eight minutes left, Alvaro Folgueras, he's going to take on Noel. He's going to drive the lane. Right-handed layup is good, plus the foul. He tied Jackson last with a game-high 15 points for the Colonials. Under a minute. It, we're going to have Bo Myers for three, and it goes for Bo to get Wright State over 100. Colonials lose by 30. Well, we're going to stay at Dayton at the Nutter Center. As I said, women's basketball was on a lengthy losing streak. We'll see if they could get out of it at uh, Wright State. Let's take a look at some of these highlights. We start off Raiders, Colonials at Dayton, as I said. And we start off in the first corner, Danny Volatich gets the pass and just makes a small pivot move and finds herself wide open for a three-point attempt and nails it. Then we move on, Alexis Hutchinson. She had a phenomenal game that night. As you see there, a right-handed layup for two. And then Naomi Barnwell in the second quarter, we start off Colonials down by one. Naomi Barnwell steals it down the court and lays it in. Colonials, you'll see a little bit later, had a phenomenal night of take it, takeaways. And Micah Odell from beyond the arc retakes the lead for the Colonials. It was flip-flopping back and forth. Third quarter, we're going to see Rebecca Duomo get the ball, drive in, and make a pretty move and just lay it up and in. Still down by three. Then Wright State inbounding the ball. And we'll see a Natalie Johnson steal running down the court and an easy two points right there. And then that's not just the only time she'll do it. She'll do it again just moments later. Steals the ball, open space, and an easy layup. Colonials going down four points. But Hutchinson, as I said, had a phenomenal game. And we'll see a big moment right here. Uh, amazing left-handed saucy layup right there fourth quarter Colonials down five we'll see Simone Morris whoop as Colby Sherwin would say and nail a three-pointer then Micah Odell with a quick pass from Danny and nails a three of her own and the Colonials are just down one point with 230 remaining now down two you have Simone Morris wide open all alone in the paint tie game a minute 30 coming down to the wire and you have Hutchinson laying it up and in and then to cap it all off Casey Baumhauer running in and won 68 48 and that would be it take another look at this steal running down the court and that would be it, 76-68 final. Hutchinson, 26 points and 16 rebounds. What a tough loss for the Colonials. Really close game, been close games for them. What are your takeaways from that? Yeah, well, I think the Colonials are tending to play these close games. You know, after the recent resignation of uh, former head coach Charlie Biscaglia, now assistant, now interim head coach uh, Scott Schneider. You know, last season when Biscaglia was out with uh, some illness, Schneider stepped in and he did a really nice job, uh, you know, keeping the team, you know, mentally checked in. I think he's doing the same here as you saw in those highlights. Uh, definitely keeping the team involved and very close in it 
until the very last minute. Yeah, when they, they've looked like they've had a lot of energy since the coaching change. But when we come back, we got lacrosse on its way. Two tough opponents for women's lacrosse and men's lacrosse kicking off their season. We'll see what happens. Stay tuned on CSC. Bring it. Mom wants us home. Okay. Bye, guys. You guys need a ride? Sure. Oh, yeah. All right. How about some one-on-one? -on -one? Uh, I gotta go eat, man. Sorry. I'll, I'll see you later. Before we celebrate the freedom most Americans have, we must fight for the freedom all Americans deserve. Because all lives can't matter until black lives matter. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. It's not lacrosse season unless we have some bad weather, and that's exactly what we had today with women's lacrosse taking on number one. Boston College, number one team in the nation, and it was a tough outing for them as they would lose by a score of 23 to 22. Bella Smith, four goals and assists. Mecca Davis, two. McKenna Davis, two goals and three assists. And then not even a save for Shea Doles, who gets the win. Jenna Irwin and Lily Hadden get the goal, and Sydney Riker takes the loss with one save and 13 goals allowed. Tough outing for the Colonials, especially in that bad weather. Well, it didn't seem that fun, Kevin. Well, listen, Kev, regardless of the weather, you're still hosting the number one team in the country, so pretty cool experience there. And as I said, you know, a good experience facing that number one team. And scoring two goals, listen, I know it's not going to be a big mental victory, but scoring a couple goals against the number one team in the country is a pretty big deal, in my opinion, as they always seem to front load their non-conference with some pretty good teams. Especially with the recent offensive performance, especially in the home opener that you're about to get into. Yep, that's right. Tough offensive, tough to generate offense for the Colonials right now, and just a hard three games to open their season. Yeah, just some tough opponents. And as Cam mentioned, last Sunday was that home opener. RMU welcomed the Cincinnati Bearcats to Joe Walton Stadium. RMU lost last season and we're hoping for some revenge. Now, unfortunately, in this home opener, the Colonials would be blanked, losing 15 to zero, marking their fifth straight loss to Cincy dating back to 2016. For the Bearcats, Cameron Callahan led with six goals. Lauren Ottensmeyer was close behind with five. Lizzie Paterno had three shots for RMU, and Sydney Riker was charged with the loss. This was RMU's first time being shut out since the first round of the 2021 NCAA tournament against Notre Dame. So they can score two goals against the number one team in the country, but they get shut out at home in the home opener against Cincinnati. Tough loss there for the Colonials. Yeah, Cincinnati has a dominant defense, and one name to point out in that, Lauren Ottensmeyer. She has been the Colonials' kryptonite. 18 goals in five career games against the Colonials. Transferred from Youngstown, who is in the MAC with the Colonials, to Cincinnati. And the last two years, she has just put stellar numbers up against the Colonials. But men's lacrosse kicked off their season against St. Bonaventure. Let's take a look at what happened in that one. 16 to 11 win for the Colonials. Seven goals by David Burr with two assists, just to put the cherry on top. Elliot Holding. A hat trick of his own and a hat trick of assist of his own. Nate Fetch Fetcher, 12 saves, more saves than gold allowed, which is pretty hard to come by in lacrosse, Kevin. And Kellen Purr for St. Bonaventure, four goals of his own. Just a stellar way to kick off the season for the men's lacrosse team. Yeah, and a huge performance by Burkham. You mentioned seven goals, a huge day as the Colonials took down the Bonnies. 
Now, if you want more Colonial Sports, check out ColonialSportsCenter.com. Student writers there have you covered with game previews, recaps, feature stories, and more. Also, be sure to follow them on Instagram at Colonial Sports Network and on X Twitter at RMU underscore CSN. Now, when we come back, we're taking it to the ice. Cam will be talking to Sam Goldberg to get us more insight on this weekend's women's hockey playoff action in Erie. Stay tuned for that and more on CSC. I don't remember how it started. Go to that. Our back and forth. It always came back. Dad! You probably don't remember what you told me. That was perfect. But I heard every word. There's so many rewards in life. You coming into our home was one of the greatest rewards we could have ever had. You know, it took 20 years, and I got my third child, who was 17 at the time. It's so cool to watch the adult that you've become, and you really have done as much for us as you think we've done for you. Most of my family, they never graduated high school or even let alone go to college, so I'm trying to break that barrier. Every day after work, went straight to school, studied hard, and, and it paid off. I could not have done it alone. I see the future is really bright for me. The high school diploma is just added to the confidence, and now I feel unstoppable. Find free adult education classes near you at finishyourdiploma.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. It, now, Cam, it was a really important weekend for both hockey teams on the ice. Tell us why. Yeah, men's hockey was taking on Canisius, and they needed to beat them and sweep them for a chance to host some playoff hockey at the island, but that wouldn't be the result. Kevin, what happened in game one? Yeah, game number one, it was a short trip down to Clearview Arena for the men's hockey team. They looked for the sweep, but game one, they fell 5-2-3. Canisius took a 3-0 lead in the first 12 minutes of play, and they never looked back from there. Jackson Reineke got the Colonials on the board to make it 3-1 with his ninth goal of the year. Francis Boyver tallied 24 saves in the loss. Kyle Haskins and Matteo Giampa both with goals and assists for the Golden Griffins. Cam, you got game two. Yeah, game two, senior night at the island, and the energy just couldn't cool it off. 5-4 overtime loss, Griffin Lowren, brings the Golden Griffins to victory off of an overtime faceoff, finds himself all alone and just roofs it on Chad Veltri, George Katoris with a goal and Cade Townen with a, go a goal of his own on senior day. And look at that, Chad Veltri, 47 saves, gave it all he could but just wasn't enough in overtime. Yeah, we've discussed before just how important Veltri is. We've talked about him with leading the goals, leading saves uh, in NCAA. But now on the women's side, as I mentioned, a very important weekend. They're busy preparing for their CHA playoff tournament semifinal series against Mercyhurst. In their first season back, RMU finished 11-8-1 in conference play en route to a number three seed. As you see the bracket right there, you see number one seed Penn State taking on number four seed RIT in State College. The winner of that best of five series will face the winner of Mercyhurst RMU in a one game winner take all final. Now, Robert Morris and Mercyhurst, they split their four games during the regular season two and two. So it's gonna be a fierce matchup in this best of five series that starts tomorrow and will last through the weekend. We've got some more insight on this massive playoff series right now as Cam is joined by Sam Goldberg to give some of his analysis about the upcoming weekend. Guys, take it away. Thanks, Sam, for joining us tonight. And I got a couple of questions for you. Sounds good. Fire away, Cam. I've never been more <laughs> excited to talk about women's hockey. I know, right? Never a better time. Mm -hmm. It has been a roller coaster season for the Colonials. A lot of ups, a lot of downs for them. Would you consider this season a success for the team? Cam, if you would have told me the day after, May 26th, 2021, the day the teams got cut from Robert Morris University, that two years later, that the women's hockey team was going to be in the playoffs their first year back, I would have called you crazy. I mean, this whole story deserves an ESPN 30 for 30. 
to, to the second to last series against Penn State. Penn State needed to win one game to clinch the number one seed in the AHA, or the CHA, excuse me. And, and the Colonials, they tied the first game. Senior night, Emma Gorski coming in and setting a new record for saves and then winning the game in overtime and then going into Lindenwood and absolutely sweeping them. To, to have all this momentum going in the playoffs this season has been an absolute major success no matter what happens here in the first round of the playoffs. Yeah, and going on the lines of roller coaster, you're looking at their matchups against Mercyhurst. Two blowouts for the Lakers and two victories for the Colonials. What do the Colonials need to do this time to beat the Lakers in the playoffs? They need to avoid the penalty box. The one thing that has plagued this team throughout the course of this season is the, is the penalties. It's simple, simple mistakes that they just have to put away and they have to be disciplined in order to win, in order to win and potentially move on to the second round. Yeah, and with that, who are your players to watch in this series? So it's got to be goaltending. Maggie Hatch has absolutely just come to life for, for the Colonials. An 8-11-1 record with a 9-21 save percentage. She pulled off a victory in the first game against Lindenwood. But also, goaltending has been, an, has been great as well. Emma Gorski has gotten her save percentage up to 90% as well. 6-3 win in the last game of the season. If the goaltenders can play well and close the hatch <laughs> on Mercyhurst, they can absolutely win this playoff at the first round of the playoffs. Oh, Sam, you're so punny. <laughs> what is your prediction for this weekend? So, me personally, for, for this series against Mercyhurst, I truly believe that this is going to be an absolute dogfight. Both teams are going to trade blow for blow. I do believe that Mercyhurst will win the first game. As, as we've seen throughout the course of this season, the Colonials tend to lose the first game of a series, but then they just rejuvenate and regain momentum and will win the second and will basically reverse sweep for a 2-1 victory over Mercyhurst, and they will move on to the next round of the playoffs. Yeah, we haven't seen what a game three before for women's hockey. Let's send it back over to Kevin. Sam, thanks so much for joining us. Of course. Thanks for having me on. Thanks, guys. Now, when we come back, it's going to be time for Top Plays of the Week. And Cam and I will give you our games to watch for this upcoming week in Colonial Sports. It's a jam-packed final few minutes that you won't want to miss on CSC. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. Now anything but lonely. We have this, like, deep connection, this heart connection. He just wants to be close to you and part of your life. Every day with turtle is a perfect day. When I'm holding her, it makes me feel calmer. I think everything he does shows how much he loves us. When we adopt a shelter pet, we discover they're a little bit of a lot of things. But they're all pure, pure love. love. If I could go back and change it all, I would. I, would. I think I'm going to miss you the most. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Or maybe it's just the little moments. I could go back and change, I could go back and change it all. I could go back. I would. But I can't. Shoe. She had so many children, she didn't know what to do. She gave them some broth without any bread and kissed them all soundly and put them to bed. Hunger is a story we can end. End it at feedingamerica.org. Welcome back to Colonial Sports Center. I'm sweating in the suit right now because it is for the hot top plays of the week. Kevin, kick it off. Yeah, we got top five plays of the week. Number five. This is always my favorite part of the show. Number five, men's basketball at Wright State. Marquise Hastings inside. He's going to pass it out to Justice Williams. Whoop! No look pass to Alvaro Fogueras who lays it in. See that again. Just the perfect pass and the perfect finish. Yeah, that was a great play, and I love the Kobe whoops. I might have to hit one of my own later on. But 
RMU women's hockey down at the Lou. Emma Gorski, left-handed larceny to keep the Colonials up too late in the third. Take another look. Breakaway by Morgan Nitz, who had a goal on the day and just stopped at the goal line. Number three, back to men's hoops at Wright State. It's the Alvaro Folgueras game. He takes on Brendan Noel, drive, layup, and the foul. Folgueras finished with 15. He also finished with 15 in tonight's game against Oakland, so a nice stretch for him. Yes. Yeah, nice layup and drive by Folgueras. Some phenomenal play by Folgueras. We move on to number two, same spot though, and you'll see Marquise Hastings get the ball and hit a nasty spin move right here. Whoop! <laughs> there it is. Lays it up and in to cut the lead. But take another look at how quick that spin move was and just lays it up perfectly off the glass. Yeah, Trey Calvin tried to swipe with the left hand, but it was not to be. Number one, women's hockey at Lindenwood. Lindenwood on the power play, but it's a turnover. Lindsey Smolin splits two defenders, and it comes back out front to Callie Arnold, who scores the short Handed goal, a massive mistake by Lindenwood, a beautiful sequence by Smolin and Callie Arnold. Yeah, we talked about the Colonials earlier with Sam Goldberg leading the NCAA in penalty minutes, averaging 12 minutes a game, shorthanded. They got to be good at it at some point right. because they've been down so many times. So a shorthanded goal should come simple to them. Right, at and some point they got to score some, some shorthanded goals if they're going to be spending so many minutes in the penalty box. Yeah, and that leads to my game to watch women's hockey up in Erie. You will see Colonial Sports Network traveling up to Erie at the Mercyhurst Ice Center, Army's last game. A 2-1 to thriller with some cute Fuzzy cuddliness, if you remember a few weeks ago, the teddy bear toss, Janelle Evans, the one who scored the teddy bear toss goals. Nine goals, 19 assists, 8.875 points per game. A phenomenal player, big time goal scorer in big time moments. Teddy bear toss goal, overtime winning goal, tying Penn State goal, the list goes on. Four CHA Rookie of the Week awards, and they're going up against the probable CHA Goalie of the Year, Anna Nystrom. 19,000 min, 19, minutes, 100 minutes. It feels like 19,000 minutes. She's been out there 1,900 minutes and a ton of saves. My game to watch, Cam, the Hardwood Men's Basketball Sunday afternoon versus Cleveland State. Now, Cam, this is a huge mental block for everyone involved. The Colonials have not beaten Cleveland State in their last nine tries. Alvaro Foguier is my player to watch, coming off of back-to-back 15-point -back performances. He had a double-double tonight. He's one that I've kept my eye on over the last few games. Just 28% from beyond the arc, but I think he just needs to see one or two go in, and I think that's gonna unlock a lot for him. He can contend with Tristan and Aruna underneath, who I'll get to in a second. There's only a five pound and a one inch difference between the two. Now, Tristan and Aruna, the big dog for the Raiders. He is averaging almost 20 points per game. He scored 28 against RMU in their first matchup of the season. Was my game to watch about a month and a half ago. The Colonials lost by two. Men's basketball versus Cleveland State at home. We'll see how the Colonials fare in this one. It's a big game, I think, mentally for the Colonials. And they won't have to deal with any clocks going out. That's right. But what they will have to do deal with is closing out these games against Cleveland State. The last two or three games, they've been up double digits on Cleveland State. What can they do to hold those late leads and at home? I mean, I think... Late in the game, it's all about free throws and just protecting the ball, you know, making sure you don't have any uh, costly turnovers, making sure that you have the right guys getting to the line that can drain free throws. I know free throws and turnovers and, and sort of lackadaisical play has sort of been a problem uh, in stretches for this team, but hopefully they're able to put it all together against uh, Cleveland State. Now, Cam, it's just a huge weekend overall for the women's hockey. Yeah, I'm so excited. Two trips up to Erie. We'll see if it's three on Sunday, but they will have to face that tough Lakers team and just get by game one, and that will hopefully push them into game two with all the momentum to send them home. That's right. Take it one game at a time. Well, that's going to do it for tonight's edition of Colonial Sports Center. For everyone upstairs and downstairs, my name is Kevin Plaucha. That's Cameron McCariola, and we will see you next week.